So this morning, Sunday morning, I got out here early uh, with the purpose of giving myself more time to set up the cameras in the airplane. Um, so that's why I'm here early. Uh, to give myself time, not be rushed. <laughs> I really have no reason to rush. As most of you know, I'm a flight instructor for uh, doing corporate flight instruction uh, in the Gulfstream 280 right now. And uh, I'm on a 30-day voluntary leave of absence uh, because of all the virus and the economic uh, downturn that that has entailed. So I took 30 days voluntary leave um, and I probably have another about halfway through that. Um, no idea um, what it would be like when I go back. But at any rate, I'm, I'm getting home projects done. Did a circuit on an electrical um, on a doorbell at home with two an older section and a newer section. Spent some time tying those together. This afternoon I'm just doing some electrical work um, to put in um, uh, LED lights in the basement area. So a lot of cleanup, a lot of home projects getting done. And of course, I'm flying this beautiful PA-30 Twin Comanche. So what are we doing today? Um, today, um, I continue to break in my engines. They've got 24 hours on them. I've been working with the GAMI folks, um, and the GAMI folks are the ones who provided the uh, fuel injector nozzles, tuned injector nozzles. Um, I've got those um, installed on both engines, and I'm tracking those. Um, I've got the EDM 760 in the panel. Couldn't fit the 9, uh, 960. We've got the 760, the same functionality. Um, to give me some amazing data. So I'm working with the Electro Air people, um, which are another option I put on, on the engines. I have electronic ignition on the, uh, replacing the left magnet on both engines. Long story short, um, at this point in the break-in, 24 hours in, um, the right engine looks good in my estimation. Um, there's one caveat there I'll bring up in a moment. The left engine has one cylinder that's hot. Um, and it's it's about 30 uh, sometimes 40 degrees hotter than all the other cylinders so I'm working on that one and what I mean by working on that one is I'm running full power 25 squared today is what we'll run I'm running full power but I'm managing to that engine um, even though Mike Bush says you can run them up to 440 degrees um, during break-in I'm not sure where I am in the break-in and if you talk to all the experts they're not sure where I am in the break-in that's my interpretation of, of what they're telling me by their writings and their videos and their information and so forth. Um, and certainly uh, a discussion I just had with the electro air people um, will we'll emphasize that possibility that they might not be broken in yet. So what have we done so far? We've done the GAMI lean test. The GAMI lean test is looking at the EGTs. When do they peak for each cylinders? Absolute value of EGTs don't mean much. If you read Mike Bush, you'll know that. Um, so we're looking at the EGTs to see when they peak and then looking at the fuel flow between the time the first one peaks and the last one peaks. And that's what we just did on the last flight, it was a GAMI test, or the flight before that. At any rate, the GAMI test revealed that I'm 0.7 gallons per hour when they recommend 0.5 or less. So GAMI, just without hesitation, looked at the same data, came to the same conclusion that my buddy Mike and I came to, and I sent all that, uh, and basically I didn't have to send anything. They, and once they got the data, they said, yep, you see 0.7, it needs to be 0.5. Two new nozzles are on the way, so my mechanic should have them uh, down in uh, down near Smyrna, Cheswold. At any rate, um, so he should have the nozzles. They'll go in when we do the oil change. Um, so I'm still running with the existing nozzles. Um, now, again, we're controlling to that left uh, cylinder number four, uh, keeping the CHT uh, 400 or below, when we think it's it's hotter than everybody else. So next I talked to the Electro Air, I said, hey, could your system be contributing to this issue that I'm seeing here? And long story short, they, were, they looked at the data, they were willing to work with me, so so far so good on customer service everywhere. And they said, what we want you to do is, um, you haven't run it long enough, you, you're probably not done the break-in process. So 25 hours in, they might be right. Um, Mike Bush will tell you anywhere between one hour and 100 hours, way to nail it down. Um, somewhere in that time frame is when you'll uh, when you'll call it a broken in, and then pretty much universally, from what I've read, uh, they're saying look at the fuel con or correction, the oil consumption, when that stabilizes. Well, and they go through this this recommendation that you put the airplane just in the precise spot and measure the oil after every flight. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, it's just ridiculous. In my mind, in my opinion, it's ridiculous because it's like, you know, what is it? Measure it with a micrometer, you know, mark it with a chalk line, cut it with an axe. Um, you can't get that precise. I mean, there's all kinds of, you just can't get that precise. So, what I'm doing is I am running these engines until I, I lose a quart. 
Um, when I consume a quart of oil and I'm ready to put an entire quart in, that I think is a much more accurate measurement of uh, what you're burning. And so far, I've burned three quarters of a quart um, on the right side, three quarters of a quart on the right side in 11 and a half hours. Um, I'm closer to a half of a quart on the left side. So the right side is, is three quarters, the left side is about half of a quart of oil. Um, so I'm gonna run them until the first one hits a quart, uh, needs a quart, and then I'm gonna add, uh, I'm gonna to top them both off. Um, at any rate, I have 18 more hours to go before the oil change and we switch out of mineral oil into regular oil. And the status of the situation is, don't know whether we're broken in or not. Um, but everything looks good. The EDM is helping me manage it. I'm happy, um, we're gonna keep flying it. Um, so what, and I'm going to take like today, for example, I'm going to fly it at high power, 25 squared. I am going to lean it to 10 gallons an hour. Um, I don't see any reason to run 12 gallons an hour through these engines. Um, I'm not trying to save money here, but I just don't see any reason to run that much fuel through it because I'm looking at CHTs and the CHTs aren't getting above 400. Please leave a comment if you think otherwise I'm, I'm open to opinions, uh, but that's basically looking at all these different opinions and coming up with a with a strategy and approach. So we're gonna be running 25 squared today. We're gonna to keep it low to keep the normally aspirated engine power high. Um, so I'll be about 2,000 feet. I'm gonna skirt around Dover. I'm gonna go southbound along the coast, make it interesting. I'm gonna go um, either just wide of Dover's airspace if they don't want me in their class delta or I'm gonna ask for permission to go through it at 2,000. Fly down the coast, um, be watching for birds. I'm um, going down to Ocean City, Maryland um, there's a bird sanctuary just to the south of that. I just got to be mindful of that. And there's another one um, uh, near Dover as well. So I'm going to be mindful of those because I don't want to hit birds. And uh, then we're going to go down as far as Ocean City, Maryland, turn around, come back up to Waterloo, which is near Cape Henlopen. Um, and then we'll take, um, take a right and go across to Cape May um, and then run up the coast uh, for just a little bit. Um, take a look at the empty beaches because for two reasons one COVID is still out there um, So I don't think they're going crazy with the cool weather and today. It's it's rainy um, So we'll go up there and then we'll shoot over to Millville and back to Wilmington I'm not gonna get gas today, so I won't be going to Georgetown um, We've got plenty of fuel for this run and then for um, a short run an hour run For the next flight where I will stop for gas. So that's kind of where we're at All right, let's, let's get, get this bad boy started up Two unlit towers in the vicinity of Wilmington Airport, ATC can advise upon request only. For IFR clearance, contact ground control at 121.7. Read back all hold short instructions, advise on initial contact that you have Alpha. Alright, departing, right, departing runway 9. Return approved. Props are both up max. Power's good. Airspeed's alive. 
must fly. Ground effect. Blue line, gear up. Birds. I'm gonna leave the fixtures up. I got 426 on the left. Go under four, and that's normal after takeoff. Cow flaps, I'm leaving open. And I've got mixture full rich at this point. Airspeed's coming up. So one thing that tells me is maybe what I need to be doing is um, being uh, less prompt at leaning. Let those CHTs settle down a little bit. Now at 2,000 feet, I'm going to have to keep my eyes up. So it's, it does get challenging monitoring engine instruments and everything else. I haven't switched tanks yet. A lot to do. Decided to send down to 1,500. Still talking with Dover. Going to follow the coast around Cape Henlopen. on the uh, Indian River Bridge. And one thing I will remark about this uh, this uh, EDM 760 is that with uh, without this data monitoring, I can't say enough how I'd be flying along fat, dumb, and happy. I would assume at this point, based on the oil consumption that I'm all broken in, I would be leaning the engine, looking at those CHTs, everything would be honky-dory, and I wouldn't have any idea what left cylinder four was actually doing. I was in Indian River Bay off, off my right. We used to have a vacation home down here until a couple of years ago. The Indian River Bridge just came in and out of view there. Ocean City's next. Rehoboth Bay is uh, 12 o'clock. Oh yeah, this is nice. Super smooth ride. Engines are super smooth. Number one com had some static a couple flights ago. That's gone away. Don't be in a but particularly when the airplane's been sitting. Don't be in a rush to get everything uh, fixed. Let it settle out. But sometimes the gremlins are just moisture or corrosion that's work their way off. They work. Okay, let's make a turn. Fly out over the ocean just a little bit. I just saw something blink. Shit, I got a CHT that's going nuts. I'm at full rich. I got a CHT probe this bad. I saw a CHT alarm, a CHT alarm. That probe flashed up to five or 600. What a distraction that was. Oil's 190. It's higher than, than I've seen it, but it's where it should be. THT number three, the probe must be shot. It's all over. RPMs are good. Yeah, it's all over. I'm going to call that a data problem. We'll leave the cameras on for now. Dover, uh, Twin Comanche 833 Dr. Fox is northbound. You still with me? Hey, firm, sir. No problem. Awesome. I'm going to. Uh, 
change a little cha bit of a change of plans. What I'm going to do is stay with you um, and uh, get flight, VFR flight following right back up to Wilmington. Chris, like you said, uh, back up to Wilmington Airport? Uh, roger that. Yep, we're going to come right by you. I'll ask you for a clear through to Class Delta again, and we'll go right back up to uh, Wilmington Airport. Roger, no problem, sir. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to ignore CHT3, even the alarms that come in. Boy, you get an alarm on your uh, brand new engines. That'll start your heart again. And I did see one of these blips on the last flight and talked to my buddy Mike and I, we went over the data, and it's a it's an anomaly for sure. Um, you can see this thing going all over the place, so um, I'm sure it's just a connection issue. And this just goes, this is reinforces another reason. So I've had three issues since I brought the airplane back. They've all been, in my mind, minor. You don't know that at the time. So this particular issue here, um, with CHG number three, it's either a bad probe, more than likely, it's another loose connection. So I had a loose connection on one of the switches down here on the, the left electro air control that caused the uh, breaker to trip. And of course, to lose that left igniter, I boarded a, a takeoff. Uh, actually, I was holding short, and I decided not to take off uh, until we got the prop looked at. When we looked at it, it was a loose connection. Prior to that, we had the loose connection on the voltage regulator. Everything looks good. So there was two loose connections. This may be another loose connection. Now, with all the work that was done, I'm not going to complain about that. I mean, we're, we're running this down. This is why I don't put passengers in this airplane. Why I don't do angel flights in this airplane. So I get five zero hours. Five zero hours, zero squawks. Where I put bodies in here that are not pilots. Now, I would take a pilot with me that understands the risks, explain the whole thing to them. Because they understand the risk. It's not about having help. It's about understanding risk. I was going to go over to fly across the water and go over to Atlantic City. There's beaches. I've decided not to do that because of this anomaly. There is an outside chance that I could have something going on here. No reason. Turbulence is uh, definitely picking up just a little bit. I would call it occasional light at this point as I'm getting close to that uh, storm cell. I even hesitate to call it a storm cell, it's just a rain event. But it is very cool to watch. The outer edges. The airplane is literally flying itself, following the coast almost by itself, very light touch on the controls. You have to remind yourself you're not an autopilot. Here comes the bugs. Thank you, sir. So I'm going to discontinue fuel transfer from the cells. I am going to bring the fuel pumps on. Transfer aux to the main. Aux to the main. Right pump off. Left pump off. I'm on the mains for landing. Okay, so I got to get the gear out. So I'm going to bring the power all the way back to 14. And that works fine. I'll look at how much shock cooling is happening. Delta Fox, we have 220 at 6, runway 32, clear to land. Runway 32, clear to land, 3 Delta Fox, thank you, ma'am. Fuel pumps are on. Landing gears. I do not have a safe indication. There I do. I got it. Meanwhile, my speed has decayed. Because I'm an idiot. That was a nice slowdown. I'll have to see how much I cooled it. In fact, that was a very nice slowdown. I 
I could have closed the cow flaps. Probably should have. Low and slow, correct? Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. Undercarriage. Undercarriage. Mixture. Props to go. Yep, we'll get them now. Props. Five hundred. One of these days, I'll have a flight that's everything goes so smoothly on. No distractions. Rock solid professional. Not this one. All right, we missed that bird. I'm flying right on blue line. Until I get in close. I'm going to leave the flaps at two-thirds. Commentary three Delta Fox ten left at Fox Juliet three Fox Juliet stays with me. Fox left on Fox three Fox Juliet stay with you three Delta Fox thank you man. Not my best flight but it'll do. Fox 3, Fox Juliet, 